If your co-pilot that you are building in Copilot Studio keeps doing this, then I have a secret for you. It is that you need to be utilizing topic inputs. Now, if you need to know how to set up topic inputs, you are in the right place because that is exactly what we're gonna be talking about. Everything you need to know in this video right now. So like I just showed you, if you are having a scenario where the Copilot Studio is not picking up the inputs that you're trying to give it and still asking questions that you've arguably already answered, then it's probably because you've added this question within your topic. Now, something that I don't think is super well documented is the ability to create topic inputs. And you can actually customize the prompts on these topic inputs and a whole lot of other settings and I think it's wise as you design these co-pilot topics and how you want to approach them to begin utilizing these and not just the conversation flow within the canvas. For example, right now I'm using a question note and even though I'm triggering this topic with this, I want to order a light roast coffee sentence, it's still not understanding that my coffee type should be of type light roast. I hope, I hope that makes sense. That's kind of the scenario that we're showing here. Now, the reason for that is because when you submitted that prompt, this topic wasn't already started. And so this is where it now starts and that's the question you're gonna get. But again, if you utilize topic inputs, then it can lean on the generative AI capabilities of the co-pilot and begin doing what you want it to. It can actually then turn this into this. So how you create topic inputs is you need to navigate to your topic. This is our order a coffee topic. How you need to create topic inputs is go ahead and navigate to a topic. This here is our order coffee topic and under the details, which is in the top right hand corner, you're gonna see a inputs. Now, at this point in time, we do not have any inputs and we now need to create them. So if you select create new variable, it's gonna show a bunch of different settings that you can set for this topic input. Now, topic inputs are basically just fancy variables within your topic and don't need to be created within a question node or a set variable node throughout the canvas. Let's say for example, we want to change how this topic gets your order. And instead of asking questions like, what sort of coffee do you like? and what size coffee you would like. Let's go ahead and add this into our co-pilot, excuse me, our topic inputs. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these questions here. Starting from a fresh canvas, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I just wanted to for the sake of an example. I'm gonna go to inputs, and now I'm gonna create our coffee type input. So I've gone ahead and filled this out, skip the boring stuff for you. This is kind of what we're looking to determine. I might also want to add, you know, the options for coffee type could be light roast, medium roast, or dark roast. The reason I'm adding that is because at this point in time, I have not found out a way to create, be able to use custom entities within these topic inputs. If you are not familiar with what entities are or custom entities, we are not talking about that here, but entities basically define the type of variable this is capturing, right? So as we can see, this is a string. This could define what those strings could look like, I guess, if that makes sense. Now, the only ones available is I have created custom entities for coffee type and coffee size, but they're not in this list. I don't know if this is something that will be coming at the time of recording. This is the current state. Hopefully you can add custom entities into your topic inputs, but at this point in time, I cannot. So we are kind of bound to using these as strings. Now, one important thing to note is you can see if I open up these additional settings, there's a ton of additional customization. And specifically, I have copilot prompts user for input and configure how copilot will ask the user to fill in our coffee type and so if you select customize here you can actually define what this question would look like so instead of having a question node here you can define it here and let's say we wanted to say what sort of coffee do you like or better yet what sort of coffee would you like to order after all this is our 
ordering coffee copilot topic, right? There's some additional configuration settings, like how many times do you want it to repeat itself, um, some additional entity validation, etc. Let's go ahead and save this. So now, if I go ahead and do a send a message node, let's just, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about and show this working, I'm gonna go ahead and add our coffee type variable that's being set by our inputs in a conversation node. Now, I go ahead and refresh our test. Let's put this, let's, let's put it to the test here. Let's say I want to order a light roast coffee. We can see that it has taken and instantly with our inputs understood, hey, the, the coffee type needs to be set to um, light roast. Wow, excuse me. Now, let's say for a different example, I just said I want to order a coffee. This is where the question is being defined because it can't quite go to this next statement because it depends on the coffee type variable which need to be set by the input so it prompts the question. So how, how can we think about this? Let's say that in my example, and I will be building this out in another video that will be linked to this one at the end, but let's say that we needed to add a Power Automate flow, for example, that to actually go and create our order in our database from this, this Copilot experience. An input for that flow would likely be coffee type, another one would be coffee size, and so, it, before getting to that flow, it's going to need all of those inputs. And so it's going to automatically ask all of those questions to gather those inputs. Does that, does that make sense? So now if I add light roast, boom, you can see the answer that it, it has is light roast. Let's go ahead and do another one and show you all of this being put together. So I've gone ahead and created our coffee size input. I've added all of the necessary information that we did on the first one, including our custom prompt message, as well as I went ahead and updated this confirmation message. It says, one moment as we get your coffee size, space, coffee type, coffee. So for example, this could say one moment as we get your small light roast coffee, right? And then from this, from the, Further on, we could you know, continue this process as much as we need. Now, let me go ahead and just test this and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here is a message, I want to order a small light roast coffee, please. If I submit this, let's see if Copilot is going to be able to understand what I'm talking about. One moment as we get you your small light roast coffee, dot, dot, dot. Now, what if I try this again and said, I want to order a small coffee. So giving it the coffee size, but not the coffee type. Let's say today I'm feeling like a medium roast. One moment as we gather your small medium roast coffee. I, I hope this is making sense. I have found that in my first experiences building co-pilots in Copilot Studio, I was just building them like Power Virtual Agents chatbots. But using these topic inputs and outputs, you can begin to utilize the generative AI capabilities and not have to spend so much time building out logic and questions and conversation nodes within the canvas. Thank you so much for sticking to end the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.